rolling hills on a sunny day. In a field, there is a farmer who is tending to a flock of sheep. Today is the day, and it has been three years in the making. Slowly, the farmer shepherds the sheep over to the edge of a field with equal parts sorrow and excitement. The farmer opens the gate. The sheep are confused. The couple bar in a questioning tone. They slowly walk up to the open gate. The farmer stops each one, gives it a box containing a pair of shears. The sheep don't know what these are. The farmer, instead of offering answer, merely tips his hat and says, look after yourself. Slowly but surely, the sheep start to leave the field. Wandering off towards the horizon and towards their destinies. Now it took me a while to realise that I was one of these sheep. And that maybe this freedom concept wasn't so great. Maybe I wasn't ready for it. About two weeks before university finished. I was sat upstairs with my housemates. And we were watching TV. And an advert came on between programs. It wasn't anything abnormal, wasn't anything you wouldn't see every day, but it sort of reignited some fears in me that had been dormant for a long time. So I very, very quietly removed myself from the room and I went downstairs. And in these times of trouble, I called my mum. <laughs> And I said, Mum, I've known you for 22 years now. And she said, yeah, because uh, you're 22, son. And I go, yeah, yeah. And I go, I come to you now with a question. And it's a very important question, but it's also a very hard question for me to ask. So I brace myself. And I say, Mum, what the hell? is APR. <laughs> and there's silence on the other end of the phone. APR, son. APR, annual percentage rate. It's annual percentage rate. And she tells me a bit about what it is, and I say thanks, and I end the call. But afterwards, I just seemed worse somehow because it seems like, at the age I am, 22, that I should have known what APR is. So, of course, I tried to justify it. And when I tried to justify something, I seemed to get very existential. So I wondered if when I said, what is APR, I meant, what is APR? Did I really mean, what is APR? <laughs> and, of course, this escalated very quickly, and before I knew it, I was outside in the garden, looking up into the sky, and contemplating the deep meanings of the universe. <laughs> Never has a direct line advert prompted such a violent <laughs> epiphany. <laughs> now, it's a misconception that at a university we learn all the skills we need for later life. We don't learn life skills, we just learn survival skills. We learn how to forage for food so we don't waste away. We learn how to protect ourselves, both emotionally and physically. We learn how to keep ourselves clean and presentable so we can go to nightclubs and try to procreate. <laughs> In my experience, emphasis on the try. <laughs> so the skills that are strained and evolved by the university experience are the skills that are hardwired into us anyway. If you don't eat, you die. If you don't protect yourself, you die. If you don't procreate, well, in a grand sense, we all die. <laughs> Despite extraneous, crazy circumstances, and no way is knowing what APR is essential to the preservation of our mortality. Yet, in the modern world, in societal terms, it is important. Seems crazy, then, that there is no platform to learn about these things. At school, <coughs> at school, 
I learned about things that are not absolutely essential, despite what maths teachers want to tell you. An understanding of Pythagoras is merely useful. It's not something you run into on a day-to-day -day basis. It becomes essential later, of course, if you want to work at, say, NASA, or a science lab, or a calculator factory. <laughs> no, I'm in no way saying that the education system is wrong. No, these subjects are all important to our development. But I'm saying that there should be something extra. Because one thing we as humans who have created these things and given them weight run into day to day are things like APR, council tax, the price of milk. Why, for instance, is milk a few pence cheaper one day and a few pence dearer the next? It's never explained or commented on. It might not even be noticed, but it is there. And that's what all these things have in common. They're just there, and we have to interpret them, which would be okay, but there is usually a right or wrong answer. So, how about this? A class. A class where you learn all of life's simple lessons. What is APR? Where do you pay your council tax? Here is the deal with the flipping milk. <laughs> At school, we had a lesson called Guidance and Welfare, which sounds like a pretty good name for what it is that I'm proposing. Instead of Guidance and Welfare just being the time to get together as a group, why not extend it to include all these life lessons? <coughs> I believe that school would be the ideal place to have this class because you lose people at sixth form and then you lose people at university and these are the people who we need to get this information earlier than graduates. The class could go even deeper than just general principles. It was one of my deepest regrets that while at school I didn't get a part-time job I had no real understanding of the global or national economy, so I assumed it would be easy to get one later. Well, it turns out that wasn't the case. And I think if I was told about this earlier on in my educational life, that I would have tried my hardest to get one and start gaining experience. This isn't meant to be a cheat sheet. This is meant to guide people through life by holding their hands the entire way because there is a drop-off point. You lose people at school and then university and then sixth form. Not in that order. <laughs> but, but, but you're always on the curb on your own having to make something of yourself. Which is fine. But you need your basic tools. Classes will give children a more established understanding of the world we live in today. It would break the ultimate, ultimately nice but slightly damaging bubble of a flippant everything's going to be okay attitude. This is what we need to break up the unrest in young people. Because young people today are just like me, and they're just like those sheep. They're standing, looking up at the sky, and wondering what their place is in the world. It's no one's job to tell us that, but we need to know the world's place in us, in society. And that is up to everyone. Because at the moment, we are just like the farmer, standing at the edge of the field and saying, now let the sheep be free. Thank you.